Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today. I'm, of course, Gregory Guy, joined here by Casey, who from now on out I'm going to refer to as Ginger Tub. And for your viewing pleasure, we have a very special guest here today. We have my mom. How are you doing today? I'm fine. How are, are you? Are you excited to be here? Of course. Why, why is she here? Because it's Mother's Day. Uh, we'll, we'll, Mother's we'll get into Day. that in the back end. Right, but you got a reason. Right, but it's not Mother's Day for like another 10 days or when 9 this, days. When or... this comes out about? No. No? Okay, whatever. <laughs> You want to start well, over? actually, yeah, no. Tomorrow, uh, the day after this comes out, yes, it will be Mother's right. Day, I believe. Well, then there we go. That's so. a good point. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. I was thinking financial. Right. Uh -huh. But anyway, we will be presenting uh, the next episode of Bang Head STEM. So I'll just go ahead and throw it over to you, Casey. What, uh, what are we going to be talking about here this week? This week, we're going to continue with our energy series, and uh, this week, we're going to do hydropower. Can I just say I have loved the last two energy film notes? Yeah, you, well, I've been. I'm already working on the third one. Mm, fair enough. I, I don't know how good it's going to be, but we'll try. Well, mate, you got to right. keep those numbers up. <laughs> All right. So, what is hydropower? It's uh, energy created by the flow of water. Um, Six point three percent of total U.S. Uh, scale electricity generation and 31.5 percent of the total utility scale renewable electric generation so 6.3 of total u.s energy is uh, created by electricity or by hydropower um, and 31 percent it accounts for 31 percent of the renewable energy source that we use uh, to create power in this country um, it works by basically water flowing through a pipe or a penstock and uh, pushes, pushes against blades and spins a turbine and a generator to produce electricity. And, and by the way, any, every single type of power generation um, requires the spinning of an object. Um, yeah, a typically a turbine, correct? Right, right. That, that goes. That goes. That also goes for certain types of uh, um, electric generated by well, coal and. I, I think. I think a more accurate representation would probably be like nuclear energy. It creates, you know, through through the process they use that energy to create like steam by like heating water. Right. To turn a turbine. Right, and that's the same way with every industrial plant, um, whether or not it's nuclear, uh, oil, coal. They all heat water that pushes a, pushes steam that turns a turbine to create power. Um, so um, that it's a uh, hydropower has basically been around for thousands of years. People have used hydropower to create power, um, not specifically through electricity, but um, just a paddle wheel going down a river um, and they would use that to uh, like uh, grind grains down um, and uh, fam famously you might have seen like wind power in um, in the Netherlands where you got the big wind uh, mm -hmm. towers windmills, windmills. Mm -hmm. and basically those do the same exact thing where they spin and it spins gears down the bottom and crushes grain and that's what they were for they're not just for looks <laughs> They do look cool, though. They do look cool, yeah. Um, so there's about 1,450 conventional and 40 pumped storage hydropower plants in operating currently in the United States. How, how many did you say? Uh, 1,450 conventional and uh, 40 pump storage uh, hydropower plants uh, operating in the United States. And... By the way, pump storage uh, hydropower is basically you actually use um, some other form of energy, such as um, gas, coal, um, and basically it just pumps water from one place into a higher elevation section and then drops water on top of the blades to spin the just, turbine. Okay. Um, do the benefits, it's uh, clean. Efficient and can be easily paired with uh, uh, other renewable energy 
resources to produce energy at peak. Um, and at peak is like you you can um, like for example like solar um, can only create so much energy, especially when it's uh, it, even when the the sun's blocked and it can't uh, receive the solar power. But on a dam, for example, you can let the water build up, and mm -hmm. the more power you need, you can release more water to generate more power. Yes. So it's reliable in the fact that you can generate more power if you need to. Can you mention some that are here locally? Uh, well, I mean, we can talk about, you know, Conowingo Dam and, mm -hmm. and everything else. I, I honestly, I mean, you might know something about Conowingo Dam if, if you want to, you have anything you want to say about Is it? it? I, I do have one question. Is it true that there is a crack in the dam? I'm not certain. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I However, didn't know if I that was like... It. I didn't know if that was like a local folklore tale or whether it was actually true. Oh, there's a lot of folklore about that dam. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get to it here in a little bit, but water is uh, extremely erosive. And uh, it's definitely good. Everything, every dam needs upkeep and maintenance um, and they they all have their issues with it and anytime you have some kind of uh, piece of equipment that requires the use of water if that equipment's breaking down it's normally water based almost 99% of the time it's always water based because water is well corrosive. water creates corrosion yeah, right basically. yes um, so Hydropower also produces a number of benefits. Uh, outside of generation of power, um, it can it controls floods, uh, it can uh, support irrigation systems, and um, it can help supply water to uh, nearby uh, towns and houses. Cons. So these are the bad things here. Um, it can adversely affect the surrounding environment. Because you're blocking the water, um, the wildlife around the area depends on and has been living with that water source for hundreds if not thousands of years and has built a specific um, lifestyle surrounding it and blocking that water up definitely disrupts. Yeah, it changes the, the uh, ecosystem. Right. You should um, know that term as an environmental major right. in college. They, they do build... Um, they do build spillways around most of the dams where the life, uh, the local uh, life can generally stay the way it was, but it does still, it still changes and affects the water flow and the life within the water. Um, water can vary. Uh, there can be variations in the water supply. Uh, for example, if you have a drought, um, you're definitely not going to have as much water as you did before, and uh, in some places, uh, the change the change changes occur throughout the world um, environmentally. Sometimes rivers just dry up. You know what I mean. Um, then uh, I also added that water corrodes, um, and we already talked about that a little bit. Um, so one of the biggest uh, issues with uh, Hydropower is the expenses of creating a water power plant in a dam. Um, so I looked up uh, a spe specific. Um, I, I went with the biggest, um, the biggest dam is uh, Hoover, or by by cubic miles of water. So the dam that can hold back the most water, which is Hoover Dam, um, which can hold back 8.95 cubic miles of water. And in 1931, it cost $49 million to build, which was extremely outlandish in that. If, and if you want to go along with today's money, it would be $680 million to build the Hoover Dam. Which may not seem like much, but there's a lot of maintenance, repairs, and mm -hmm. cost and repairs. Um, yeah, that, that would actually be interesting to know how much was spent on maintenance and repairs. I did, I did try to oh, find that. But you couldn't. I could not find ah. the exact amount um, that they they use for maintenance. And another repairs. another good thing to know would be how much electricity does that you know plant actually produce? You know, on right. all, on like a yearly basis. I did I did, I did see that. I don't remember exactly what it was. And I didn't I didn't write it down. Mm -hmm. um, Fair enough. But I did see, I did see it. 
Um, I w- then I I looked up uh, since I couldn't find the maintenance costs and repairs. I did was looking up um, how I was. There's apparently a famously Oroville Dam in California, which had a crack in one of the spillways, mm-hmm. um, and it is estimating to cost 1.1 billion dollars um, to repair that. So, as a maintenance cost, especially, I mean, it also it is California, so that's another thing. Um, but federal government and the FEMA has already released $684 million to so they, help repair this. So they covered over half of it. Right. So the federal government is paying into the, the cost. And, and also, uh, Hoover Dam, by the way, is still being paid for by the people of uh, Nevada. Uh, Five million dollars a year um, is being um, put back into the uh, federal government from the dam. And th- that's covering, um, the, I mean, that's paying back for the, uh, the building, the from, maintenance. From the state government or the federal government? Federal government. Oh, okay. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Right. And that's all I got for hydropower today. Hydropower. There you go. You heard her first. Water makes electricity, if you use it right. right. So, uh, Casey, I'll just go ahead and say thank you for, you know, putting that presentation together. Um, any, 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 any comments on, on hydropower? Do you, do you think it's beneficial for the uh, environment? It, it, I would assume it is a very clean energy source. It is a very energy. clean energy. It definitely is dependent. The problem, the biggest problem, is that it has to be near a waterway. You have yeah. to be near a large waterway uh, or a river, um, and it also affects the environment nearby. Fair enough. Well, Fair enough. Yes. there we go. Um, ladies, like I said, once again, thank you for putting that together, Casey. Um, Mom, thank you for joining us for this uh, episode of Banghead Stem. We talked about hydropower. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, of course, Gregor Guy, and thank you for watching.